Well, good morning. Good morning. Come on in and find a seat. Make yourself at home. So glad you're here uh, this morning. For those visiting, my name is Jared, and I'm the pastor here. And if you are visiting here for the first time, I want to invite you to take out this little yellow card in the bulletin and uh, drop it in the offering basket uh, when those are passed out. We just want to know you're here, and we want to say thank you uh, for being here. So if you'll do that for me, I, I would greatly appreciate it. We do have a couple of announcements before we get started. First of all, if you are going on the Mission in the Mountains uh, mission trip, uh, we need your money. Okay, it's only ten dollars. Uh, we need your money by by next by July eighth. Okay, that's the deadline for registration. So if you signed up, we've got over fifty people in this church and in, in, in the surrounding area going on this mission trip. Okay, praise God for that. Over fifty people, and really. Wednesday, we'll have our Wednesday night fellowship meal that we do once a month. We want to invite you to come. That's at six thirty. Bring your favorite uh, covered dish and to share with everyone, and then we'll just around the fellowship with one another. If you are volunteering for the Faith and Freedom Festival, which is this coming Saturday, okay? If you're volunteering, you want to volunteer, please come to the Wednesday night meal so that we can have a meeting uh, afterwards. We just talk to you about what you need to do uh, as, as a volunteer. So again, that's this Wednesday at 6.30. Also, next Sunday is uh, The Rising Continues. The Rising is our once a month Sunday night worship service. Uh, it's at 6.30. Um, if you like your music loud, if you like the lights to be turned down, if you just want to worship God, if you want to be able to come in here and be comfortable and raise your hands in church and just sing loudly and boldly, then I would invite you to The Rising. Uh, it, is a, it is a much different worship environment than we do at 11 o'clock. That's this coming, uh, next, this coming Sunday at 6.30. And real quick, men of Ball Ground, our Bible study, men's Bible study starts tonight at 7 p.m. at David Arthur's house, which is in downtown Ball Ground. And so men, if you are, are not coming, you need to change your mind, you need to come. If you are coming, be there a little before 7. And Jim and Scott and myself, we have agreed to provide Again, I want to thank you for being here. It's an honor to be able to worship with you. Let's open the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for allowing us to come into your house, allowing us to be uh, in your presence. And Lord, I just pray that you would bless this time, that we would, we would be open to you, we would be open to your word, that, that, uh, that whether that word is, is encouraging or whether that word is, is, is uh, difficult, that we would be open to it, Heavenly Father, because we know that you are here. We know that you're here to help us through whatever we need to go through. And so, Lord, we just pray that this hour would be, would be God-honoring, that our hearts and our minds and our thoughts would all be God-honoring. It's in your holy and precious name, my prayer. Amen. Uh, I want to invite you to stand and worship with us.
because we are honored to be able to baptize two children this morning. And uh, it is pretty awesome. Um, make you get one up here first. All right. You go over here. There you go. All right. Let me introduce you we've got here. First of all, we've got Stephen and Corrine Prescott. They're the mom and dad of, 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 of Sophia and, and Bryce. Correct? And then we got godparents back here, Mary Alice and Ed Keller. Correct? Now, for those that don't know, uh, Corrine and I went to high school together. Uh, but don't ask for any stories. Um, but I don't know if you have any stories. Hopefully you don't have any stories. Because uh, I was a great kid. Uh, there's also another high school person here in the back. And don't ask her either. Uh, we were in chorus together. So she might have stories. I don't know. Um, so, but it's an honor to be able to be here and to baptize such a beautiful little girl. Now, since you're, since you're a little older, I'm going to ask you questions directly. And then we'll let mom and dad take care of her. Okay? So we'll start We'll start with you. Is that, is that fair? All right. Now I'm going to ask a question about these things. Okay. Do you truly and earnestly repent of your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Please answer right here. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Lord, and in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life? Please answer right here. Do you desire to be baptized into this faith? Please answer right here. Will you then obediently keep God's whole will and commandments and walk in the same all the days of your life? Please answer me. I will. Please answer. Rise, Paul, and Prescott. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for Bryce. I thank you for his commitment to you. I thank you that this was his idea, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray your blessing upon him as he, as he grows not only in age, but that he would grow in faith and stature within his faith, Heavenly Father. I pray for his family that he would continue to be a blessing upon them. Lord, thank you so much for his testimony. It's in your holy and precious name. Congregation, I commend to you, to your loving care, this person who you this day recognizes as a member of the family of God. Will you endeavor to live that he may grow in the knowledge and love of God the Father through our Savior Jesus Christ? Please answer, we will. Amen. Will you please welcome to God's family. All right, Mr. Sophia, will mommy hold you? All right, y'all are mommy hold you, okay? Now that's mommy, that's it. Confess your faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His answer to you. Do you therefore accept as your duty and privilege to live before this child a life that exemplifies the gospel? To exercise all godly care that she be brought up in Christian faith, be taught the Holy Scriptures, and learn to give reverent attention to the private and public worship of God. Please answer to you. Will you then endeavor to keep this child under the ministry and guidance of the church until she accepts for herself the gift of salvation? and be confirmed as a full and responsible member of Christ's holy church with that sort of will. Alright, you're going to have to stop and come here now. Alright. So be it, Giselle Prescott, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for we thank you for allowing her to be here today. I want to thank you for mom and dad who understand the importance of what's happening here. Lord, I pray that they would continue to raise her up in your word and raise her up to be a believer in you, to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for this church that we would be excited right now and that we can be excited to be a small part in raising her up in faith. Lord, I pray your blessing upon her when you watch over her and protect her as she grows. It's in your holy and precious name I pray. Amen. Again, congregation, 
I commend your love and care of this child who you this day recognize as a member of, of the family of God. We you endeavor to live that she may grow in the knowledge and love of God the Father through our Savior Jesus Christ. Please answer, we will. We will. Will you please welcome Sophia? Let's stand and celebrate and worship. God bless you. Where's the seat? God bless you. Finding myself in the Lord's words and the funny thing is it's okay. The last thing I need is to be heard and what to hear.
no matter how much money they make or how little money they make, no matter the color of their skin, no matter their political orientation, no matter their sexual orientation, that we as a church would just simply love them. I say we care. And we have mercy, we have grace uh, available to you. Lord, because you know there are people within this community that are suffering today. People who are, are struggling to put food on the table, who are, who are struggling through family turmoil. And the list go on and on and on. Lord, I pray your blessing upon them. I pray that you would put me into their mind and heart the name all that. Okay, now we're just totally off of it. You, you want to see scars? I'll show you scars. I got a roadmap on my 
head. Um, well, if Bill says it explains a lot, I'm going to hurt somebody. Uh, but uh, I don't even know where I was at. God wants you to forgive people. How does that sound? That sound good? Can we do that? Forgive people? Woo! All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these gifts. I thank you, Lord, that, that they're just they're energetic. And I, 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 I enjoy that. So, Lord, just thank you. Thank you. I pray your blessing upon them. That as, as they do things they know they're not supposed to do, that, that they would they would ask for forgiveness. And that they would they would seek forgiveness of, of someone they hurt, but they also seek forgiveness from you. Because Lord, you want to forgive us. You don't want us going around being really guilty. Uh, of, of stuff. You want to say you are forgiven. So Lord, I just pray that they would, they would do that uh, when they need to. Bless the Lord, they go from here back to Children's Church and then as they enjoy the rest of their summer vacation. It's in your holy and precious name I pray. Amen. Alright guys, you know about Children's Church over here. For those new with us, uh, Children's Church is in this back classroom. So if you need them, that's where they are. And as children return, I ask the ushers please come forward as we continue worshiping through our giving. We are, as I mentioned, this coming Saturday, we have a Faith and Freedom Festival. That's going to be in downtown Ball Brown at the uh, Lions Club Field. If you're heading south and downtown, right there on the right, right before you leave downtown. Uh, we, are, we are very, very excited. I don't know if you saw the Cherokee Tribune on Friday. Friday, Thursday, there's a huge sticker on the front of every Cherokee Tribune uh, advertising the festival. That's over 25,000 stickers. All right? There's an article in the Cherokee Tribune today about the festival. There are flyers all over town, all in Canton and, and other places advertising the festival. We are so excited. But here's the deal. We need you to be excited with us. All right? Because we need you to be there to be an ambassador, not only for Jesus Christ, which is number one, but an ambassador for Ball Grand Avenue Church. Because I hope that people will come to us looking for a relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's through your giving here in this church we're able to provide ministries, we're able to provide, provide help to people, we're able to provide a building to have worship in. And so when we give, we are looking to the future. We are giving for the future generation so they can come to know Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings in our lives. We pray now that we would uh, be able to be free from them so that we could freely and joyfully and hysterically give back to you. Even beyond the tithe, Heavenly Father, just, just to give because it feels good.
I also pray your blessing upon you. See the holy and precious name of you. Amen. You can see it. I didn't want to say real quick. Um, people came out of the woodwork today to come worship with us. Uh, I mentioned Corrine and I going to high school and then April uh, George. I don't know what, what's, what's your married name? I don't know. Shipman? All right. Uh, we were in chorus together. And then I see Gary and Gary Smithwood sitting out. And, and uh, there was no lightning strike when Gary walked in, so I think we're okay. Gary uh, was one of my dad's best friends growing up. And uh, they are fixing to move from Carolina. And so this is their last Sunday in town, and they decided to spend it with you all. And so I want to thank y'all for being here. It means the world to have you in the congregation. Um, we are beginning a, a new series today, a three-week series called A Better You. And, and through this, this series, we're looking at ways that we can become better, healthier, holier, let's go on, but by focusing on three areas. The past, the present, and the future. Today we're going to be looking at, at, at the past, and then next week we'll focus on the present, but then on July 8th. Uh, we'll take a break because I won't be here. And, and Chris Guy will be bringing God's message that day. But then the following Sunday on July 15th, we'll finish it off with looking at the future. And I hope you'll make it a point to be here uh, throughout this series, especially when Chris is preaching. Um, because this is a message that we all need. Because I know I need it. Because really, uh, I don't want to burst any bubbles, but none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. We all have areas in our lives that, that need improvement. So I hope you make it a point to be here and invite your family and your friends because it, 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 it's a series that, that is really all about hope. That there's hope for us all. Now I want to point uh, out in your bulletin this morning, you should have got your little card that has an image on it, a better you. And underneath it says, the past. Um, I want to invite you to use that sheet of paper as, as uh, for notes. Uh, if you want to jot down some notes during today's message, uh, I want to invite you to do that. It will be another reason for you to use that as well. So if you don't have a pen, uh, please just kind of raise your hand real quick and we'll get you the writing utensil uh, throughout the service today. Uh, so today I'm going to start with, with the past because we all have one. Now at risk of losing your attention this morning, let me ask you. Where were you born? Think about that. Where were you born? Where, where did you grow up? Think about it. What was the name of your elementary uh, Easy for me to say. I didn't go to elementary school. What was the name of your elementary school? Who was your favorite teacher? Are you start to get memories? Are you start to think? Who was your first boyfriend? Or your first girlfriend? Let your mind just kind of wander for a moment. Thinking about your past. Where is it taking you? Just follow the thoughts. Where's your mind going? It's okay. I'm giving you permission to zone out here for a moment. So use it. Because I'm going to snap you back in a moment. Where is it going? Are you thinking about maybe a high school dance you once attended? Are you thinking about a favorite toy? Are you thinking about your first car? What was your dad like? What was your mom like? Now, before I completely lose you, you, let's try to focus back for a moment. All right, focus back. When you started thinking about your past, you started going down those roads, thinking from elementary school, maybe that jumped you off to high school for some reason, and then maybe that made you think of, of a doll that you used to have, or it, it, it led you. Were there any emotions that started to well up? Were there any emotions tied to those memories, whether they were good emotions, or bad emotions, happy emotions, or, or sad emotions. Because we all have a past, for good or bad, we have one. And the past is an interesting thing, because the past is dead. I don't know if anyone's ever told you that, but the past is dead. Like a pastor who has to sit down with the family in the hospital and tell them their loved one is dead. It's dead. It has ceased to exist. It is no more. 
and you have for many of us, we do everything we can, everything within our power to keep our past alive. It is brain dead, but we have it on life support. Why? Well, if they're good memories, we obviously want to hold on to them. Memories of our children being born, memories of our marriage, memories of our first date. We don't, we don't want to lose our good memories. What about bad memories? What, what about harmful memories? My hope and prayer today is that you will begin to, to walk away from your bad memories. Because our past is like a shadow. A shadow that is cast over our present and our future. Things in our past have, have shaped us in who we are today, for better or for worse. We were told we were ugly growing up. We were, we were told that we would never amount to anything. We were, we were always the last kid to be picked on the ball field. Whatever it was, it shaped us. It shaped who we are, and it shaped how we feel about ourselves. And it's cast a shadow not only on the present, but all the way up to our future. You see, that's not what Jesus wants for us. Do, do you know what a shadow is? What causes a shadow? But the stage lights upstairs are, are shining on me. They're, they're creating a shadow on, on the floor and on, on the back wall here. That shadow represents a spot on the wall where the light cannot fully get to. Now, in order for the light to shine on, on that spot, just pick that, pick that spot you see where my shadow is. For the light to get to that spot, I'm going to have to move. Now the light can shine fully on that wall. The shadow is gone. You see, that's what the negative events in our past can do for us. It can create a dark spot where the light of Jesus cannot shine. It limits the blessings God has in store for us. It blocks His love from reaching every part of us. And again, it's not what Jesus wants for us. In fact, there's a story in the Bible that I think speaks clearly to this. I want us to go back to the empty tomb on that Easter morning. I hope you know the story. Uh, Jesus, hopefully you know him. Jesus is crucified, and he's killed, and then he's buried. But on the third day, he rises from the dead. So we're going to be reading from Mark chapter 16, starting in verse 1. It says, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought uh, spices so they, could, so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went and fled the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Now you probably know that story. Angel in the tomb, he's not here, yada, yada, yada. We know it, okay? But there's a part in this story that I think if we're not careful, we totally overlook. And that's verse 7. Look at it again. It says, But go, tell the disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Now remember, we all have a past. Every one of us. And everyone who's ever lived has had a past. And that includes Peter. Remember Peter. Where are the stories up here? Let, we're going to look at Peter today for a moment. Peter was, was one of Jesus' first disciples. In, in the first chapter of John, we find the story of Jesus calling Peter to follow him. It's found in John chapter 1, uh, verses 40 through 42. It says, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, 
was one of the two who heard that John, uh, what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called uh, Cephas, which, which when translated means Peter. Now we're not going to look at Eric's story about Peter, but I just want to uh, touch on a couple of them. Now Peter is believed to be a large man. I don't know if you know that. He's believed to have been a large man, maybe a strong man, and probably with a bit of a temper. But Peter was loyal to Jesus. Well, at least Peter would tell you he was loyal to Jesus. Peter would say, no matter what, I am loyal to this man. But if we know the story of Peter, we know that's not exactly the case. Because just before Jesus is arrested, he gathers his disciples in the upper room for what, what is known as the Last Supper. And immediately following the Last Supper, they walk from the upper room to, to the Mount of Olives. And that's not a very long walk, but it's long enough to have a conversation. And it was on this walk that Jesus tells Peter something that Peter completely denies could possibly be true. In Matthew 26, it says, Then Jesus told them, This very night you all will fall away upon account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if I fall away upon account of you, uh, even if all fall away on account of you, I will never fail. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Maybe when you think back on your past, you think of something you did that you never thought you would do. Maybe you cheated on your taxes. Maybe you cheated on your spouse. Maybe you, you lied to your spouse. Maybe you, you hit your child out of anger. Maybe you just weren't completely honest with, with somebody. But many of us have, have done something we said we would never do. We stood at an altar with our, with our spouse and we took vows. And we had every intention. See, I knew, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I knew when I was a child that I would never smoke cigarettes. I knew it. I would never pick one up. And if you had told me when I was eight years old that in just eight short years I would be smoking cigarettes, I would have, I would have laughed in your face. And then I turned 16. And I started smoking. I smoked for 16 years. I vowed I would never do this. But I did. If you have a memory like that, I want you to write it down on a piece of paper so you don't forget. See, Peter knew, he just knew that he would never abandon Jesus. Not him, oh sure, all the others. But not me. But as soon as Jesus is arrested, we find this story. While Peter was, was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with the Nazarene Jesus, she said. But he denied it. I don't, I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went, on, went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. Again, he denied it. After a while, those, those standing near said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to uh, call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the words Jesus had spoken to. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and left. Peter was a big man. And all it took for him to do the thing that he never thought he would do was for a young woman to point at him and say, you're a follower of Jesus. And he denied it 
three times. He did what he said he would never do three times. And then he broke down and wept. He was devastated by his actions. In fact, after this, Peter disappears from the Bible for, for, for a long time. After this, you flip the page, you don't see Peter's name come up at all. It's not mentioned again until we get to the resurrection story that we started with. Remember that seventh verse in the sixteenth chapter of Mark? I think it speaks to the devastation Peter's past actions had on him. He had denied Jesus, and then Jesus was killed, and so it was over. This action was going to weigh on him for the rest of his life. It created a shadow on his present and also on his future. And Jesus knew it. You see, I think the words of the angel were exactly what Jesus wanted the angel to say. Go tell Peter that I am alive. You see, he purposefully singles out Peter. Did you go tell the disciples and Peter, he knew what Peter was going through. For Peter, the day that he denied Jesus, was still alive to him. Why? Because he allowed it to be. It was controlling his present. It was going to control his future. But Jesus, through the, through the angel of the empty tomb, was saying, what's done is done. Let it go. I am alive. Let it die. After all, that's why I went to the cross. That's why I'm alive again, to free you from your past. If Peter continued to allow his past to cast a shadow on his life, he would have never been able to fulfill God's call on his life. In order for Peter to fulfill the call on his life, he had to let go of the past actions that he regretted. He had to step aside and let the light of Jesus shine fully on him. See, many of us today have refused to step aside. And many of us have refused to let our past negative actions die. Folks, we are called to let those things die. It seems so simplistic and uncaring to say this, but you're the one allowing that past to be breathing. Now that might be uncomfortable, but it's the truth. We allow our past to continue breathing. No one else is responsible for it. Now let me say this, it's not easy, I understand that. Some of you have a past that you haven't told anyone about. Some of you have things in your past that the rest of us could never imagine. But in order for us to be a better us, we've got to find a way to let them die. Part of this is through forgiving the person that hurt you. Forgiving the person that mistreated you. We continue to keep them alive and continue uh, allowing that past to control us. But Jared, what about those things that were out of my control in my past? I mean, Peter was responsible for his actions. He did it to himself. But there are things in my past that people did to me that I am not responsible for. What about me? The word is the same for you as well. You've got to let it die. You've got to let it die. You've got to find a way to forgive the person you need to forgive. You've got to find a way to love the person you need to love. You are allowing it to continue to breathe and continue to cast a shadow on your life. Let me tell you something about your pastor that you may or may not want to know, other than I used to be a smoker. Sorry. Um, this month, 
I started going to a Christian counselor. And I, I'm not ashamed to admit that. And I, you know, I wrote counselor here. Actually, the original word I wrote, I marked out and wrote in counselor. Christian psychologist would be more accurate. You see, I've got things in my past that I have allowed to keep breathing. Things that I have allowed to cast a very long shadow in my life. And in order for me to be a better Jared, in order for me to be a better pastor, a better husband, a better father, and a better son, I have to remove the power of my past. You see, I don't think the angel's words were just for Peter. I believe they are, they are for us as well. Go tell the disciples and Jared that Jesus is alive. Go tell the disciples and Marshall that Jesus is alive. Go tell the disciples and Wendy Kidd that Jesus is alive. Go tell the disciples and Corey that Jesus is alive. Go tell the disciples and Sarah June that Jesus is alive. Go tell the disciples and Brandon that Jesus Christ is alive. And fill in your name. You see, in order for us to be better... In order for us to be all that Jesus wants us to be, we have to find a way to remove the negative power of our past. What is it for you? What is the memory that has been floating around your head this entire morning? What is it in your past that has negative power over you today? I want to invite you to write it down. On that piece of paper. I put this piece of paper in the bulletin for a reason. I want to invite you to write it down. Maybe it's one thing. Maybe it's just one simple, single thing. For me, it's going to be a lot of things. I have several things I need to write down. So I'm going to write it down. And I understand people are sitting close by and there might not be anything you want them to know about. So that's I understand that. You can wait till after church to write down when you have a moment of privacy. And then what I want you to do is I want you to take this around and every day this week, I want you to pull it out. And I want you to confront it. I want you to confront this memory. And I want to invite you to pray over this memory. I want you to pray for God to help you let it die. I want, I want you to pray for God to help you forgive someone if you need to forgive someone. Pray to God to help, have Him help you love someone if you need to love someone. And I want to invite you to listen to Him. If you need to see a Christian counselor, come see me. I'll give you the name of a good one. If you need to come talk to your pastor, Come talk to your pastor. But listen. The choice is yours. Peter had a choice. Peter had a choice. In fact, let's finish the story real quick. Peter returned to Jesus. And Peter is present and the Holy Spirit is poured out on the day of Pentecost. Peter would go on to preach the good news. Old. Peter would go on to lead thousands of people into personal relationships with Jesus Christ. He would heal the sick. He would perform miracles. And it's only because he chose to step aside and let the light of Jesus shine into every area of, of, of his life. No longer did the shadow of denying Jesus have power over him. Are you ready to become a better man? Starts by confronting the past and letting it go. Letting it die. Allowing the light of Jesus to shine. Allow his light to shine on every part of your life. Those parts that you've kept from him. Those parts that you hide from everyone else. Those parts of your, of your life that are the most hurtful and the most painful. Those parts that you want to even live or live. Write it down. Confront it. Pray over it. 
and let it go. Are you ready to become a better you? It starts with the past. Let's go. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that regardless of our past, in you we have a future. Lord, there, there are parts of my life that, that I have not allowed you to work. There are parts of my life that I have held on to that have limited me in, in, in not only being a pastor, but also in, in being a, a good husband and a good father and a good son and a good friend. And so, Lord, today I, 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 I want to step aside and I want to own your glory mercy and your grace to shine on those areas so that I can become a better, a better me, so that I can let things go and I can be healed and made whole today, Lord Jesus. I know for a fact there are hurting people in this congregation this morning. There are people in this congregation today that have a past that they have, they're holding on to, hurt that they're holding on to, pain that they're holding on to. And, and, and God, I know you sent your son Jesus Christ into the world to say it, it, it's time to let it go. There's forgiveness available. There's mercy available. There's healing available. So I pray that as we write down those things in our past, that each day this week we pull out that piece of paper and we will confront our past. We will pray over our past and we will listen to
shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun for bed shall God be here will be Yeah. 